Hey everybody, welcome to Jeff's 180. And in this 180 seconds, I wanted to comment about a story that's been circulating online about bed bugs being collected in New York, testing more resistant than bed bugs collected in other places of the country. And there's a couple quick points I wanted to make about it. And I think it's important for people to keep, you know, this story in perspective. You know, the first of which is it's not shocking to me. You know, it doesn't surprise me at all. When you have, you know, cities, and, and, and it may not be just about New York, and it probably isn't just about New York, it's about many of the cities, where you have millions of people that are dealing with bed bugs, potentially, if not hundreds of thousands, and a lot of those people may be struggling to make ends meet. And, and when you're trying to solve this problem on your own, because you don't have the money to hire a pest control professional, a lot of people are going to go out to the local store, buy pesticides, bring them back to their house, and spray them in the home, and sometimes more frequently than they should, and sometimes in larger quantities than they should. Remember, follow those label directions. But what that does when you have tons of people doing that, it speeds up that resistance process. It selects for resistance quicker. When you have a city with, say, a million people doing this, and that's just an example, or a town with 10 people doing this, obviously the millions are going to select for resistance quicker. And so it doesn't shock me that this study came out. And, you know, it may have unfairly singled out New York. It isn't just about New York. It's about any place. And the other point to make is that, you know, you need to keep this in perspective. We already knew that bed bugs were testing, you know, positive for resistance to a lot of the pesticides we use. And so you want to keep that in mind when you're looking at pest control companies or looking to deal with, you know, bed bugs in a home, that you're using non-chemical measures. Because if you are dealing with a resistant colony of bed bugs, you want to be using encasements and interception devices and steamers and vacuums and cryonite systems and other ways that don't just rely on pesticides. And that will help overcome those resistant colonies. But we already knew they were out there, and a lot of good progressive companies are using non-chemical measures. And so that's another important point to make. And then lastly, you know, a lot of people misunderstand resistance. When they hear that a bed bug colony is resistant to pesticides, they think those pesticides don't work on bed bugs. And that's not necessarily what it means. We know pesticides do have an effect on bed bugs and are an important part of a bed bug management program. And, you know, just because a colony is resistant, if you say a bug in that colony was, you know, hit directly with a pesticide spray, even though in a lab it tests resistant to that spray, because you hit it directly, it exposes that bug to a really high dose of active ingredient, and therefore that bug still may succumb to that pesticide. And so resistance doesn't mean that that pesticide will not kill that bed bug. It just means that it has, and, and the right word isn't tolerance, but in a way it's tolerance, a tolerance to that pesticide. And so, as I said, it doesn't shock me, but at the same point, this story doesn't change anything either. Um, and I just wanted to get those points out there because I think they're important, and that's Jeff's 180.